Hi everyone. Well, better late than never, right? So I have a bit of a story here for you. I've been full of stories lately, right? So there's a reason that it's been such a long time between the last entry of the BC 348 video, the restoration video, and this one. And it's because I've been waiting on this BC 348 right here. So this BC 348 right here was given to me by a friend and he requested, you know, he was actually in the aircraft avionics and he's been around for a long time. I don't really want to share his story without his permission, but the radio is something special and he requested that I entered this into the Grand Receiver Restoration Series. So he's a good friend and what do good friends do? They honor their other friends' wishes and that's what I'm going to do. So technically, we're kind of starting over with this radio receiver here. So it has some modifications done to it and we're gonna have to see what's going on with it and we'll go from there. I haven't opened it up. I don't know what's inside myself. I haven't even, I haven't done anything. It's come from the box to the bench and that's the way we both see it right now. So we both might be in for a surprise. I see it does have a uh, three prong cord on it and uh, some other jack coming out of the back. It looks like a quarter inch jack or something like that. And uh, we'll see what's going on with it and we'll start the restoration on this one right here. It is a very nice example of a BC 348. It does have some scuffs and scratches, but uh, much nicer looking than the other ones and it should look very good in the lineup with all the other receivers in the Grand Restoration Series because pretty much all of them are, well, they're in very good condition. At least they're, you know, eights, eight out of 10, something like that. So it's nice to, I know the Grand Receiver Restoration Series is about the electronics and the receiving end of things, but it is nice to have a nice looking lineup and have them look as close to original and operate as close to original as possible. So what I'll do is I'll move you close to the bench here. Let's take the case off of this thing and see what we're up against. We'll move the old one out of the way and somewhat start over. Let's get started. Here's the new BC 348 that has been entered into the line up here. So it's still under here. This little my drill bits are here holding it up. So as you can see, the case is in much nicer condition which could uh, you know, easily warrant a repaint. No problems with that whatsoever. There's no holes drilled in the case of this one. Uh, much cleaner example. The only scuffing really is in this area here. And it looks like there may have been some form of a sticker here. Somebody's taken some, looks like felt and just covered that up. So I'm sure that this could be very easily fixed up. It has a modification tag on here. So it looks like there may be some modifications that have to clean that up. Looks like it might say number two. Something like that. Uh, you know, has the mount on the bottom here, the mounts on the bottom and all that stuff. It looks like somebody may have uh, replaced or uh, repainted the, uh, the toilet flusher here. Uh, other than that, it's looking pretty nice. This is, this is about the only thing. And that's not really not too bad at all. The way the light's hitting it really, you know, pers I guess you could say uh, amplifies the way it looks, but it's, it's actually not bad at all. So a nice clean example, all the lettering is clean. There's almost no chipping on the knobs here. One little teeny chip here. It's, uh, you know, got all the, it's got everything it needs. It looks really, really nice. So that should look nice in the lineup. This is probably the nicest example that I've seen of one of these things. Cause you know, usually these things are so modified and all of that. Another really neat thing is I'm getting the matching transmitter for this as well. So we're going to be doing that. So we'll do that down the road. We'll do the transmitter and then you know what? Maybe we'll make some contacts. Make some contacts on the amateur radio band with it. So there we go. Had many, many questions. Paul, are you an amateur radio operator? Yes, I am. I've been for many, many, many years and uh, I'm very easy to find. My call sign is very easy to find. <laughs> so. So I guess all we really need to do right now, actually, you know what I should do is probably get this thing fully onto this gray mat here because this has got the mounts on the bottom and they're kind of sharp. You see that? And that looks like that would probably take the old paint off the bench. So this up here like so. And I will move this other one out of the way. I guess I gotta, everything is going to be wound up and bound up and everything like that. So, down the road, we'll probably end up going through this one too. If there's enough interest in the BC348s, we'll finish this one off. I actually had gone as far as 
threading this. You see that there? Move the focus over there. Threading this hub here to try and pull this hub off. I made a uh, puller for this and everything. So uh, yeah, just uh, lots of work gone into that. So what I'll do is just move this over. Get this one out of the way. Ugh, like so. And now I won't destroy the bench. It's all hardware from the old one. Still have lots to clean up. This is how fresh this is. I wanted to get a video out on this just as soon as possible because we're all waiting to get this series happening. So there we go. So it's a soft mat. Whoa, that comes out rather, rather easy. Oh, look at this inside. Definitely some mods, and it looks like somebody did a really nice job with the power supply as well. Blah, move that forward. Look at that. So I don't know what's happening there. That should be interesting to find out. And uh, definitely has, uh, I can tell you this, this smells much nicer than the other ones. It has that old, uh, I don't know what you would call it, uh, transmitter. It smells more like an old transmitter. It smells very much like uh, my Gates broadcast transmitter that you've seen in the videos here. It smells very much like that. So it has a nice old radio smell to it. For those of you that are in the know, you know what I'm talking about. That is a pretty good smell. Oh, look at this under here. This is looking pretty good. Look at what's been done under here. This is all bound up because the cords are taped up in the back. So we'll take a quick look at this here. So the nice thing about this is this is even more original than the other one. So we have a lot more to do with this. We can test a lot more caps, see how these caps held up over the years. Uh, the power supply, of course, is modern. I don't know what's going on in here, but uh, maybe we'll make another power supply for this if this isn't adequate or whatever. We'll figure it out. It is, uh, it's looking very, very original aside from that power supply. Now, again, these things came with dyno motors, right? So, and who wants to listen to that? Not me. And if we're going to be having this in the, uh, in the lineup of radio receivers, we don't want to be able to switch between other receivers and then have this dyno motor whining in the background, destroying the way the audio quality of the other radio receiver sounds. So it's a good thing that it is, you know, done like this. Now, I'm not so keen on the, maybe the solid state aspect of this. Yeah, I see diodes in that. So I'd like to have this a little bit more like the mods that were way back in the day. So we'll probably build another platform for this and uh, we'll stall, install a transformer and put a 5Y3 rectifier in there and things like that. So the, the standard modification to make this thing run off the AC line is probably what we'll end up doing. Or again, we'll pull one out of a parts receiver here or something like that, right? And go after that one later, we'll see. You can leave that in the comments. Would you like to see a power supply design for this or would you like to just see one pulled out of the other one and get on with the restoration? Let me know in the comments below. So this thing here has oh, something to support this. I have a roll of solder here ah, on the other side. Of course, nothing is where it needs to be, right? So it looks like in the bottom, there is a lot of originality going on and that uh, makes me pretty happy. So all of these caps here are all sealed and it should be interesting to see how they've, you know, how they fare over time. You know, these ones here and this one here, see how good they are. The fuse looks like it's probably original, which is another thing. All the shielding is on the boxes here. The face is straight, even has the original connection block here. If you see this, this is the original connection block in the back, which is still here. So all the voltages are present on this connection block. It might be a good idea to eliminate this or maybe just leave it in there for someday down the road if uh, some other thing comes up. So who knows uh, where this leads, right? Maybe down the road we'll revisit this thing and throw a dyno motor in it someday. Just depends on the interest of the actual receiver. So these capacitors have been epoxied in here and there's a bunch of stuff going on in this radio receiver. So yeah, we'll probably do uh, a modification that's a little more era specific, something with a 5Y3, you know, you know, 5Y4, whatever, that series of rectifier directly heated, 
a rectifier or something like that, like what's in the other radio receivers. So maybe that and a choke or just a resistor, whatever. So that's what's going on there. It's looking like it's uh, all original. And I can see up here, I'll show you this. I can see up behind that plate. You got to be so careful when you remove these plates, this plate on the top here, because the paint comes off. So, uh, but, so I, I don't want to be removing this and doing this before we can do this all together. Because if this thing, if the paint goes south, you can be with me while it's doing that. So we got a capacitor here that maybe I can get out of the way. Yes, I can see the uh, caps up in there, see the bottom of the tube sockets up in there. Let's see, can I get some more light on this so we can maybe all see this together? Kind of hard. You can see one of the caps right up in there in the corner. It's looking like it's all original behind there. And the paint isn't chipped on this at all on this panel. You can see that. Some interesting looking washer right there. But I'm not seeing that over. I'm not seeing any paint chip. So this looks pretty much original. So it's doing pretty good. As I, as you can see, it's looking like there are original parts up and up inside there. Try and get the focus up in there. There we go. Kind of maybe no. Work with me now. So something like that. There it is. So yeah, it's looking like it's original in there too. I see a resi nice little resistor right there. Looks Alan Bradley type and all that. So it's looking good. So what we're going to do in the next episode is remove this. We're going to start testing caps. So we'll start testing all these caps just to see how they how they held up over time. See if they're still fast. And uh, let's see, whatever, what, other, what else have we got going on here? Yeah. Yeah, whatever we run across, whatever needs to be corrected, we'll correct, we'll test resistors and components and everything. So anyways, I just wanted to introduce you to this new radio. And uh, this is where we're gonna start. Put this back on its top side here. Get me out of the way. All the tubes, they look really nice in the top here. You can see this, move this down. These look, uh, they're so shiny. They almost look glass, don't they? And they're metal tubes. So that there and, you know, everything is looking really nice. It's nice and clean. So this is a nice clean example to, to definitely work with here. So we'll test the original power supply in the next entry here. We'll see what voltages it's putting out, if it's close to where it needs to be and all that. So we'll just go through this thing and fire it up and uh, see what goes on with this thing and then get on with the restoration. So anyways, welcome to the brand new BC348. Q, the brand new entry, this fella right here. Thanks for stopping by the lab today. I hope you enjoyed the brand new entry to the Grand Receiver Restoration Series, which will be continuing very, very soon. I've been putting a lot of time into a brand new invention that I've created and that I'm releasing on Patreon. So there's a reason that there has been a bit of a pause here as well between the entries in here, because I'm just, I'm here, there and everywhere. I'm designing circuits for there and doing videos for here and doing videos for there. So it's, it's very busy here at Mr. Carlson's lab. But the next entry to the Grand Receiver Restoration Series will come soon. So definitely hang around. It should be a lot of fun to see how this radio receiver, which flew around on a Warbird, will perform when it's all restored and it comes back to life again. It should be a lot of fun. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic designs and inventions, the ones that I just talked about, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I try to make it fit everybody. There's stuff about vacuum tube equipment, there's stuff about solid state equipment, and there's surface mount builds and through hole builds and lots of projects for you to build, follow along with, and learn from. It's a great place to be. Definitely check it out. It's, uh, there's a lot of people there and it's a great community. So I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link. You can click on the pin link or of course the link under the video's description and it'll just take you right there and you can check it out. All right, until next time, take care. See you very soon. Bye for now.